The biggest stars in Hollywood are frequently considered for the same roles, which led to the inextricable bond between Harrison Ford and Kevin Costner, who were drawn into several shared orbits and produced a number of enormous hits, award season favorites, and disastrous bombs. It was inevitable that Costner and Ford would be vying for the same roles, because they were two of the most well-known and financially secure names in the industry in the late 1980s and early 1990s. But what makes their relationship so intriguing is how many of them there are and the way in which they coincide and have after-effects. In order to pursue his directing debut on Dances with Wolves, Costner turned down the initial offer to play Jack Ryan in The Hunt for Red October. This was a wise move that resulted in enormous box office success and two Academy Awards for Best Picture and Best Director. Ford turned down the chance as well, but he later replaced Alec Baldwin in Patriot Games and Clear and Present Danger. Decades later, Costner returned to the role of Thomas Harper in Chris Pine's disastrous Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit. Oliver Stone verified that Harrison Ford had received an offer to play Jim Garrison in JFK, stating that Kevin has guts, despite the fact that Harrison Ford was terrified of it because of the risk. The director also acknowledged that having one of Tinseltown's hottest commodities front and center helped Costner's post Dances with Wolves credentials help acquire the funds required to present the narrative he wanted to tell. The unintentional dovetailing between the two heroes was also reinforced by Wolfgang Peterson's action classic Air Force One, even though Ford ultimately came out on top. Costner might have had President James Marshall all to himself, but Ford told the Los Angeles Times that his colleague and contemporary ultimately made the offer to Costner. The famous actor of Indiana Jones and Star Wars said, This was a script that Kevin Costner originally had, and he gave it to me. Kevin's schedule prevented him from doing this major commercial film, even though he was aware of it. Although he explicitly stated, Kevin and I are not intimates, Ford did acknowledge that Costner's performance significantly improved, because he really threw a winner my way. Things didn't go as planned for Costner when The Postman came out the same year as Air Force One, even though it went on to become a commercial hit and the second highest grossing movie of Ford's whole career outside of his iconic franchises, behind only The Fugitive. He may have regretted his choice after seeing the post-apocalyptic foolishness, which was an absolute disaster on all fronts, bomb in theaters, and win all five of its nominations for the Golden Raspberry Awards, Worst Picture, Worst Director, Worst Actor, Worst Screenplay, and Worst Original Song.